College football gambling picks for week number six. Picks against the spread. Last week, I went three and four. Not a good week. I've had a couple of those this year. Not a fan. It happens to the best of us. Chris, however, went six and one against the spread and even won three other games that he didn't even put in the picks to go nine and one on the weekend. Chris was rocking last week. Overall, I am 17, 17 and one. Chris is 19, 15 and one. In our picks contest over on the website, winningcureseverything.com, Marcia W. or Marcia W. from Collierville went 8-2, and two, and she won the tiebreaker, so she got the two free nights at Sam's Town along with the $100 gift certificate to Twain's, to Twain's Steakhouse Congratulations. and the $50 slot play. Uh, along with that, this week, if you go sign up, we got one free night at the Fitz along with two free buffets. Go check that thing out. The new Fit Sportsbook is now open. Sign up over at winningcureseverything.com. Let's roll into the picks. Am I going first? Yep. I'm going first. Game number one for me. Oklahoma at Texas. I'm taking Texas plus seven and a half. It's Saturday, 11 a.m. on Fox. Tom Herman's career as both an assistant coach and a head coach, 22 and one against the spread as an underdog. You can't make that number up, man. Texas is built unlike any other Big 12 team. Oklahoma is built to beat Big 12 teams. That's why Texas has been so good against them. Texas is 5-0 and straight up against the spread against Oklahoma the last five seasons, winning two of them outright. This matchup at 11 a.m. is always bonkers. It's always close. 7.5 is too many right here, especially the fact that it is over a touchdown. And it's leaning even more because it opened at 7 and people are betting on Oklahoma for whatever reason. Quit that crap. Go put your money on Texas. Hook them. I like the pick. I don't know if I like the 21 and whatever stat, but I like the pick. <laughs> Number one for me, I'm, I'm kind of pulling a little bit of a Gary this week going with some smaller teams. I'm taking the Temple Owls. Minus 12 and a half is what I got them at this morning against East Carolina. This Temple Owl team is actually really good. They're playing tough old school football the way they played when Matt Rule was there got that thing rolling they're they're continuing it right on and East Carolina they got a couple of big boy wins but they're against really bad teams I think the Temple Owls is going to push them around they're going to beat them by two touchdowns line has moved up to 13 that don't scare me don't scare me either that's actually one of my picks is it really yeah I got them at 11 and a half oh you got yeah, them a point I, better I got than them me. a point better uh, Temple is 5-3 and three against the spread against conference opponents in their last 18 games. East Carolina, 0-8 against the spread in road games with six days or less rest in the last three seasons. I know that sounds ridiculous, but... <laughs> a lot of caveats there. Yeah. Temple's defense has shown up the last three weeks. They're only giving up 187 yards passing per game. That is what East Carolina does. It is what Temple stops. I love this. Yeah. I love this pick. Temple yeah. minus eleven and a half, minus twelve and a half. I think it's minus it's minus twelve on here. Uh so the lines this week, by the way, brought to you by the Horseshoe Casino down in Tunica, Mississippi. Go check them bad boys out. Get your picks in. The lines will be moving. Yeah. That always, always remember the line will move. We're giving you what we get them at, and then you roll with it. We'll tell you what we like it up to. How's that? Well, the best we can. As best we can. We can't foresee some of this stuff. Ohio State. Number two for me. Okay. They're going back to the horseshoe. <clears throat> this is your typical letdown game. But, man, they're playing Indiana. Indiana's a garbage <laughs> they, team. They always cover against they, Indiana. They, it's 25 and a half points. Man, it could be 30 points. It doesn't matter. They're going to smoke Indiana out. They don't even have to try to do that. Tom Allen going to get smoked out. Oh, yeah. At the horseshoe. Game number three for me. Friday night game, Georgia Tech at Louisville. I got Louisville plus three and a half. That line has moved up to four. So it's Louisville plus four right now. Friday, 6 p.m. on ESPN. Georgia Tech is 0-7 as a road favorite since 2015, including 0-2 so far this year. They got straight-up losses as a favorite to South Florida and at Pitt. Pitt is awful. That's a bad team. Weeknight home underdog on ESPN for Louisville. Both teams are only 1-4 and four against the spread this season, but I think Louisville can score on Georgia Tech. I think they will come out and be fired up because they they gave the game away against Florida State. Gave the game away. I like a team coming off a loss like that. I do think it's one of those situations 
this is going to be the best week of practice they're going to have. Not all losses are the same. That loss last week is going to fire them up, get them ready for this week. I none like none of the numbers say that Louisville should cover this. That's right. The stats do not say that. But at some point, yeah. when a team is zero and seven on the road as a favorite, you got to listen to that. You got to listen to that number. What you got for number uh, number three? My guy, Justin Fuente, and the Virginia Tech Hokies <laughs> plus six against the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Listen, this Notre Dame team is good. I'm not going to lie; they're a good team. It doesn't matter. You're going into Blacksburg. That is a tough place to play. They'll be lucky to come away with a W, much less giving up that many points. I was expecting this game to be a field goal line. I saw it open at five and a half. Right before we went on the air, I checked again. It moved up to six. I took it at six. If it continues to grow, if it ever gets over seven, I'm going to double down and buy it again. I love this Virginia Tech team. It would not shock me for them to win it. I will have money on money line as well. So money line as well and the plus six. I love the plus six. Game number four for me. Iowa, the Hawkeyes, minus six at Minnesota. Saturday, 2.30 p.m. It's on the Big Ten Network. Minnesota's defense is giving up five yards per carry. They gave up 315 rushing yards to Maryland. So bad. Minnesota's offense is generating only 4.7 yards per play. You think the defense was bad? They're bad. That's bad. This They're team bad. is three and one, man. They like they were finding a way to score, but look, Minnesota has lost two big time playmakers: running back Rodney Smith, safety Antoine Win- uh, Winfield. I was giving up only one point three rushing yards per uh, per attempt against everyone not named Wisconsin. Right? Min- Minnesota is not Wisconsin. Nope. Uh, since two thousand fifteen, Iowa is seven and two against the spread as a road favorite. I think that continues. I got this line under a touchdown. It is still minus six at the horseshoe. Kurt, Roll Kurt with that. Ferentz is unbelievable, Coach. I love that pick. I, I I really considered them. But I'm going down to Starkville. Mississippi State. I'm so curious ho- about this. Hosting Auburn. And I think this Mississippi State team is just bad. I think they're garbage. I think Joe Moorhead was the wrong guy. I said it last year before the season started. You hired the coach two weeks early because for some weird reason you didn't want to wait and interview two other candidates that are far more qualified with a better resume than him. So be it. Bill Clark this, and Neil Brown. Nailed it. So this is this is the the, 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 the hand you were dealt. You got to play it. This is the girl you went to dance with. You got to dance with her. And she ain't pretty. And it's going to be ugly. And Auburn's going to go in there and they're going to beat that ass. What'd you get him at? Minus three and a half. I got him at minus three. Oh, minus three. Good gracious. All right, game number five for me. Kentucky plus five and a half at Texas A&M, Saturday, 6 p.m. on ESPN. Kentucky is seven and three against the spread as a road dog since 2016. A&M is only seven and 11 against the spread in conference games at home since 2016. Uh, or no, just seven, seven, 11 in conference games, period. Kentucky is a zero in turnover margin. They're just, they're dead even. A&M is minus five. A&M They've been, has played two of the best defenses in the they, country. Yeah, but they weren't turning the ball over. Like, that's just been, they gave away three of them against Arkansas. Okay. Like, that's what I'm saying. Both teams can move the ball. A&M, 6.7 yards per play. Kentucky, 6.2 yards per play. Kentucky's defense, however, giving up 4.4 yards per play while A&M gives up, are you ready for this number? 6.3 yards per play. A&M gives up what, some massive yards. What happens if you take yards. the Alabama game out? Oh, I don't even know. I'm going to bet that drops considerably. Probably, I wouldn't say considerably. I bet it drops considerably. That's it. Alabama's yard per play was only like 5.9 against them, so I don't even know okay, that it drops maybe, that much. Maybe. All right. I'd be shocked. So, but, it, but here's the deal. Like, it, it wasn't them. Like, Arkansas was moving the ball on them. Like, Okay. Clemson moved the ball on them. Uh, and, and what's crazy is that they played like Northwestern State and Louisiana Monroe, and the number is still this high. Like, it's it's bonkers to think of. Kentucky's defense is absolutely legit. Yes, sir. They are catching points because of the name on the helmet. Do not buy into that. Kentucky's lines are for real. Kentucky plus five and a half here. Look, I expect them, if they lose, it's going to be like a field goal game. It's going to be super tight. I'm going to have some money line action riding on this. Okay. I had money line action on them against Mississippi State. Good luck. I got the same thing here. Good luck. I'm pulling for you. All right. I'm taking the sucker's bet. Everybody 
on the planet is betting this Miami game. Everybody. And they're all betting Miami. Tells you you should go the other way. Now, hell no, I'm not going the other way. <laughs> I'm not betting on this Florida State team. Man, that is a garbage football team. Yeah. The, the, the line opened at 11. I got them at 12 and a half. Last I checked before we started, it was 13. And this is all in one day. Yeah. You're talking about from this morning till tonight, which is Tuesday evening. I don't care. I know the numbers say when 90% of the actions are, it doesn't matter. That Florida State team is garbage. They should have lost to Louisville. Louisville gave them a win. I, yeah. I, I can't figure it out. Miami's a good football team. They're I do, a really I do agree good with that. football team. Got with a chance the, with to that win new the ACC. They look really, really oh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mark Rick, legit head coach. And, and I, I think he's going to make a statement. I think so. I think so. I mean, they, they won on a last-second play against Florida State last year. Well, this is two teams that don't like each other. Well, and, and on top of that, Florida State before last season had won, what, like five straight? Correct. I mean, it was crazy. This is, this is one of those rub-it-in games. Number six for me. I'm going to start going real chalk, okay? <sighs> okay. Real chalk. All right. Nebraska at Wisconsin. I got Wisconsin minus 20 and a half. That line has continued to go down. Was- it opened now? at twenty one and a half. It is it, yeah. now it is at twenty. I saw it at twenty one. It is at twenty right now. Okay. Which blows my mind. Wisconsin is seven and one against the spread at home after a bye. Nebraska is 0 and four against the spread this year. They're giving up five point six yards per game. Michigan's defense held Nebraska to hundred and thirty two yards of total offense. I imagine Wisconsin's defense ain't Michigan's defense, but it's pretty similar. Like it I mean, they, they give up very they're, little. They're pretty close to the same team. Wisconsin is plus four in turnover margin. Nebraska is minus six. That's a 10 turnover difference there. And uh, Nebraska allows 38.8 points per game. Wisconsin allows 14. I think this is going to be bloodshed, man. This is this oh, is going to be brutal. I think Wisconsin will absolutely smoke these dudes. Like Scott it's Frost it's one of those he's, thought he's been welcome to the Big Ten. One of those where you want to rub it in, right? Michigan yeah. wanted to rub it in Nebraska. It's like get your kicks in while you can. Show them like intimidation, all that kind of mess. Beat them up, and that's exactly what Wisconsin's going to do. I got it under three touchdowns. Yeah, like that's crazy to me. That's a lot. That's all a right. lot. What's your game number six? I'm going with your boy David Shaw. Love David Shaw. Coming off a coming off a big time loss. Yep, yep. Tough, tough, tough place to play. Down Notre Dame, they get to go home. They get to they get to get a little comfortable, get a little home cooking, rest up a little bit. They get Utah coming in. Utah's normally like a really tough game. Tough team. Plays hard. Not this year. This no. is this is this is not the normal Utes that you're used to. Well, I mean, they had to replace three out of four of the defensive linemen from last year. Hadn't quite worked out nope. for him just yet. Not yet. Not yet. I think it's minus five, less than a touchdown. I was expecting this game to be over a touchdown, seven and a half, eight. I saw it at five. I took it at five. I think Stanford wins. I think they win kind of easy. I think I, I they've had some that. tough games the last couple of weeks. I think this is one of those where the only way they don't cover this is if this is just a letdown. Play to Oregon on the road. Play no running on the road. Just come home. Take the foot off the gas. Maybe they could be. David Shaw's a better coach than that. He's, yeah. he's not going to let that happen. Yeah, you you can't let your foot off the gas against Utah. No, no. Give give me the five. I'm gonna uh, not give me the five. I'm laying the five. Taking Stanford. Game number seven for me. That, by the way, back to Utah. Mm-hmm. One of the games that I didn't pick last week, but that I did win money on. I took Washington State money line because by the time kickoff had come in, they were two and a half point underdogs. Two and a half. It opened up Washington State minus one. And went all the way to Washington State plus two and a half. How you like my boy Leach going off about balanced offenses? <laughs> That's my guy right there. He's uh he's something else, isn't he? I, I, something else. I don't know that I've ever loved a coach like I love Mike Leach. Last game for me. I told you I was going chalk on the last two. Washington minus twenty one at UCLA. Saturday, six thirty PM on Fox. Since twenty fifteen, UCLA is 0 and three. They've only been a home underdog three times. 0-3 as a home underdog. Washington is 5-2 and two as a road favorite in their last seven. That's pretty insane. It's a pretty good number. UCLA has given up 7.9 yards per play. Washington's only given up 4.2 yards per play. Washington has given up a touchdown or less for entire games 
three times this year. They've given up no more than 21 points, and that was to Auburn in the first game of the year in Atlanta. UCLA is only averaging 17 points per game. They are going to steamroll Chip Kelly. They are going to obliterate them in Los Angeles. Look, this is the same freaking UCLA team that lost at home 38-16 to to Fresno State. And you trying to tell me Washington is a 21-point favorite? Give me a friggin' break. Huskies, all the way. Man, that's pretty chalky. Laying some big numbers. My last game, probably the easiest bet I've got all week. My LSU Tigers <laughs> going down to the swamp in Gainesville. Look, you think LSU can't handle swamp? Man, we invented swamp down in New Orleans. Are you crazy? <laughs> Listen, this Florida team has beat up on a couple of bad teams. Tennessee, the worst team in the SEC, and it's not close. Congratulations. You feel good? You beat up on some special people, all right? Then you go down to Startville, where Dan Mullins knows that team like the back of his hand and still couldn't score on that defense? What do you think he's going to do? Felipe Franks, what do you think you're going to do when this LSU defense comes down to Florida and just gets all all in your personal space. You're going to do nothing. You're going to turn the ball over. You're going to poop your pants. You're going to freak out. You're going to throw the ball away. It's going to get nasty. This LSU offense, they're good. They also remember Dan Mullins, Mississippi State last year, coming into Baton Rouge and rubbing it in on them. I mean, yeah, that just, wasn't in Baton Rouge. That was in Star Wars. In Star Wars. But, but beat, beat, beating them up real bad. Yeah, 37-7 nah, nah, nah. last year. Coach, Coach O, don't forget. See, you, you might think he's a dummy because he talks funny, but he don't forget. I he do is, like this. He is LSU going to beat the hell out of Florida. LSU eight straight SEC against the spread wins. That he, he, That's it, pretty bonkers. No, and he's going. He's it's going to get ugly. This game's going to get ugly. It bet the under because LSU's not scoring forty, and Florida's not scoring. They're just not scoring. Yeah, I believe that. Two and a half? Are you kidding me? It's just disrespect. I think the line is at three Doesn't right matter. now. Uh, yeah, no, it's is it two and a half. I'd lay seven. It is two and a half. It's probably going to get to three. I saw it at three today. I wouldn't imagine it would keep going the other direction. Florida, There's just no way. Florida's just not going to score. I could buy that one. Uh, we want to say thank you to the Horseshoe for providing the lines. Horseshoe Casino down in Tunica. Go down to the book at Horseshoe. Uh, put in your bets this weekend. Any of the six Tunica Sportsbook locations. We gave you everything you need to know to be a winner. Go down to Tunica, put your bets in, find more information about all those sports books over at tunicatravel.com. You can get these picks and more over at winningcureseverything.com.